Hello everyone and today we're back with another episode of the Heartbeat of Sri Lanka and we're here with one of Sri Lanka's most renowned animal lovers, philanthropists and entrepreneurs as well as a fashion icon, none other than Ms. Otara Gunawatan. Hello, I'm good, thank you. So tell me, to what do you owe your success? <laughs> Gosh, you started a difficult question. Um, you know, I don't know, it's not, I don't think there's like one one line of an answer uh, for that, you know, it's uh, years of hard work, years of uh, dedication, um, a lot of, um, you know, uh, gaining knowledge and over the years, because, you know, when I started, I didn't know anything about business or marketing or nothing, really. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really being persistent and really uh, just believing that you know what you want to do can be done I think that is really the most uh, most important so tell me a bit about uh, the good old days your family uh, back when uh, you were in Davis College and whatnot um, well, uh, I had a very free um, free and uh, um, joyous childhood in the sense of you know I was not really pressured to do uh, you know about my studies and I was allowed to be who um, uh, who I am, who I wanted to be, uh, other than probably for having to take piano lessons, which I hated and I was for forced to do for a short period. Uh, but Can you play the piano? Uh, no, I can't. <laughs> 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 and uh, so, other than that, you know, I was allowed to um, just to live the life that I wanted to lead and to do what I love to do, even as a child. So, I loved sports. I loved swimming. I loved nature. So I was given the opportunity to, you know, to climb trees and to 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 go to discover Sri Lanka, to be taken to, to the forest, to the jungles. Um, so I was always very close to, to nature okay. because I, I loved it, and uh, you know I love it today as well. Um, so I think I think that had a, a very positive impact on my life, and a, and I think it has made a, a big difference to my life um, to be where I am today. I heard um, that uh, back uh, when you were schooling, you used to come home and count your rabbits. <laughs> yes, I did, yeah. Because we had a lot of rabbits and uh, you know how they multiply rabbits. Yes. So, and then my mother obviously had to give them away and I used to like, cry and cry and cry when, when they were given away. So I used to come and count them every day to make sure they're all there. <laughs> uh, we always had a lot of, you know, we lived very much in the city, but we always had a lot of um, animals and chickens and ducks. and. Um, a lot of birds and squirrels that I used to rescue and, and treat and release. Um, so we were always surrounded by, by animals and dogs. And so you were an <laughs> animal lover from? From when I was born. I mean actually I think we are all born with it actually. It's just how, what we are taught along the way that makes us differ. Um, we are all born to, um, to, to be with nature and to live together with nature. It's the way the world has changed, um, giving priority to um, to certain things that we think we should should be priority in, like how much we need, how much we want, the endless, um, you know, the endless drive to 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 take, 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 want, 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 the more and more and more. Um, and um, I think so. That's where, and you know what we are taught along the way in in, uh, in certain schools, in certain uh, media, in certain what's out there. Um, I think that's what changes people on, you know, their, their link to nature and their love for animals. But overall, I think we're all born with that uh, within us. <laughs> so, uh, tell me, uh, after you uh, came down for a hol holiday fr while you were in the U.S. study, uh, you, you started uh, selling clothes at the back of your station bag. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that's where it all started, I believe. Yes, yeah. Do so you think it's, it, <laughs> was, it was by luck or by choice? I think it was by, uh, by chance, by luck. I, you know, I don't believe in uh, luck so much. I don't believe in chance so much. I believe we are meant to lead a certain life um, when we are born on this, earth, on this earth and wherever we are born. And I think we just need to follow our instincts and, and, and follow that path. I think that's all I did and uh, I, you know, obviously I was trying to earn um, extra money and the money I was actually trying to earn was to, um, was to help fund an elephant um, conservation project, like, you know, um, saving the elephants. Um, so that's one of the main reasons why I started it. Um, and um, so I mean I was just 
during my while modeling I, I started to do this to earn a little bit more money and to figure out what I really wanted to uh, to do for you know to uh, the rest of the years ahead of me um, and it was really just um, yeah just for fun and like a hobby that I started it really <laughs> t t tell us a bit about uh your modeling career and how you started uh, your clothing line and a bit about all that. Uh, so the modeling was also just by a request from a uh, designer at that time, Nantara, who just you know, thought I should uh, just help her out by, by modeling. And uh, that's how it started and then I, um, you know, then I liked it and then I was obviously asked uh, to do more, which is why I, why I, was, I started doing more of it. And then, of course, it you know obviously I, uh, it earned it, it helped me earn more money, and uh, it gave me the opportunity to do other things as well while doing that. And of course, I loved it because I really I really don't believe in doing things that I don't like doing or love doing. Um, and you know, it was a really um, wonderful uh, interaction with a lot of nice people, and uh, I met so many good people, so many nice people, and uh, I had a really good time as well. How was the support you got your fam uh, from your family, rather? Um, I mean, from the beginning, like I said, my family has always supported me in what I like to do and want to do. Uh, obviously, they would give input or they would give guidance, but at the end of the day, it was up to me to decide, you know, what I wanted to do with, with my life. Um, so, uh, you know, even though it, it may not have been seen as like, you know, the now it's much more accept accepted, but as you know the ideal thing for someone to be doing like modeling yeah. uh, but you know it, it was a time of change as well the whole the fashion industry was growing and uh, the, all the garment factories were, were, were growing at that time um, so you know it was a good uh, time for to be in fashion and to start in fashion uh, and um, so yeah nothing but su support from, from all of them. <laughs> Uh, tell us how the station wagon did then grew into what is <laughs> sitting there at Alexander Place. Yeah, I, uh, I had a very uh, broken down uh, station, <laughs> station wagon. Do you still have it? Uh, yes, I do. I okay. actually bought it back a um, few years ago. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but anyway, it's there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, um, how do you manage to track it down? Uh, because somebody remembered the number, so oh, I was able to nice. track it down. It took a while actually, but anyway, I found it. Um, so anyway, it's with me now. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's why I, that's how it started because really I initially started by supplying other shops, and um, that was how the the beginning of it. And then from there I into a little garage and into you know into a little shop space, very small, like three four hundred square feet, and uh, yeah, then bigger and then growing bigger from there. Um, so it, I mean it helped me also to understand. Uh, business, business and understand you know pe people management and all that part of it as well so it was um, growing with it was was really um, a good so thing you started off with just uh, buying and selling yes I used to do mostly wholesale a little bit of manufacturing um, a little bit of um, uh, um, t-shirt uh, t-shirts that I used to print and, and make with my with my own designs uh, even um, it was even that time it was to do with um, Sri Lanka so souvenirs, um, and um, so that was really the the beginning. <laughs> so uh, tell me a bit about um, how you got into the embark, uh, how you came up with rather the embark. Um, well, I mean, over the years, even throughout the business in Odell, I always um, always. Um, had a close combination with environment and um, and other animal related projects always supporting them and uh, I mean other people projects as well but always um, you know creating awareness always doing projects even I mean 25 years ago there were beach cleanups and uh, you know garbage cleanups and city cleanups sort of, you know various things that um, that I used to do through Odell and it was something that was continued right right throughout um, and um, you know, I just decided one day that rather than doing a lot of um, different small, uh, different things and not having a greater impact, uh, to try to focus on one thing which which I could make a bigger difference um, doing. So um, what I chose was um, street dogs, and uh, uh, because I used to keep seeing them and wondering, um, you know, why they can't have a better life and why why we don't see them, why we don't notice them, why we don't care about them. 
Um, so that's I just wanted them to give them a platform for for a better life um, for as many of them as possible. And um, that was really the, the beginning of of Embark. <laughs> so why did you choose uh, street dogs over any any other animal? Uh, because we you know like we don't see as. Um, because uh, you know, in our day-to-day -day lives, there are a lot of things that we choose not to see. There are a lot of things that we uh, that we know. Uh, sometimes we intend to do it. Sometimes we don't. Uh, and um, and I just kept seeing them, you know, all over the road and and um, wondering why why nobody really cares about them. After all, they it is a life. You know, they have a heart. They have a soul. They have feelings. They have hunger, they have everything just like us. Why don't we care? I mean, it's. Uh, uh, I think all lives are special, all lives need to be valued, um, and all all hearts are, are one. And um, so I just wanted to, um, I just thought that they were the ones that I want to um, support with this, with the cause of Embark. So, um, <coughs> moving away from uh, Embark, rather, how was it? Uh, I mean, you didn't you didn't uh, bring up Odell uh, in the past ten years. It was way way long ago. How was it being a woman coming up with something in a country like Sri Lanka back in the day? Um, well, you know, I, I didn't. I mean, I know there are a lot of challenges uh, that are faced on a day-to-day -day, um, uh, basis uh, for for women, and uh, but you know, I, I never let it have any barriers for me uh, for me it was just uh, there was something I wanted to do a goal I you know like a goal I want I had set and I mean nothing would would stop me I would just walk. that's where I would head and really even if there were things happening around me which was <laughs> supposed to block me I would I wouldn't really see it uh, nor would I let it bother me uh, and um, you know and I think how we can make changes also is by making by us being the change. So if I want to empower women, if I want to improve lives of women, I have to do it myself. I can't, there's no point in me sitting and, uh, and you know, speaking, saying, you know, women have to do this and women have to do that if I'm not doing it myself. So, so I wanted to be that change. I wanted to be also the, the person who, um, who, um, who makes a difference uh, as a woman. Now, coming up with your own fashion line is not something easy to do. What difficulties do you face, especially being a Sri Lankan, coming up with an international fashion line? Well, I mean, you know, you know, Dell. It was just um, we had a lot of different um, private brands, um, so it was really creating those sort of different brands for for um, for Dell. That that really um, uh, was was what I did. So it was a combination of buying, creating our own brands, uh, and then you know, developing them and. Um, and obviously growing, growing each uh, brand um, individually. Um, my own ones were to do with uh, jewelry, and I had a, a small jeans line, which which um, which was just like a um, uh, um, a, a small collection only. Didn't I didn't continue it. Um, so uh, the ones I did under my name were, were more sort of pocket, um, you know, collections, and uh, I didn't really c uh, pursue with it because I it, it was also. Um, uh, you know, a bit of a conflict of interest for me to have Odell and my own line going at the same time. Um, so that's uh, <laughs> that's that was really what it was um, about. You know how, how how I managed the balance between um, developing brands and and also buying and having other brands within within a store concept. So now you embarked on an entirely different journey <laughs> uh, altogether, and it's embark itself. <laughs> So, what plans do you have for future? What are you going to do from here onwards? Um, to me, it's not a different journey. For me, to me, it's really my soul journey and the journey I began. Uh, the Odell and, and my whole that journey was actually a, a different journey, but obviously, <laughs> obviously, one that I needed to take and and has really uh, you know made me understand a lot of um, in in lot of different things. Um, so I'm back where I, I truly wanted to be, and uh, and uh, there's so much I would like to um, you know to to do and um, to help so many lives that are in need of um, support and who are who are who do f face a lot of hardship on a day-to-day -day basis, both people and animals. 
and um, that's really what I want to focus on to see how I can improve lives and make a difference. Lovely. So, um, down to the final question. <laughs> uh, I've been bombarded with you with questions all this while. So, tell me, what advice would you have for young women who are planning on becoming entrepreneurs in Sri Lanka? And secondly, to everyone as a whole who are anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur in this country, what advice would you give them? Uh, I think it's you know a really exciting journey and one you know if you have there's no better thing than being a, like you know doing your own thing and being being, uh, you being know, your own be, boss yeah and, and you know <laughs> trying to make a difference from what with what you believe is right and what you believe is uh, you can achieve and for me it's a, it's a you know the challenge of, of um, achieving something the challenge of of um, you know doing something that I set my mind to do is is really I mean I get great pleasure out of that and uh, and you know the challenge is, is something that I take positively and I really enjoy it um, so I think I, I mean I think um, everyone can can do something and I, I see it happening a lot I see a lot of people a lot of women doing their own little businesses now and and doing you know different things um, 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 in different areas and um, so it's, it's good to see that it's expanding and I think you know what a lot of what holds us back is fear um, fear of because we are taught because we are told uh, in a, we are told to act in a certain way we are told to speak in a certain way we are told to you know this is wrong this is right really there are no set boundaries it's really what each one of you each one of us wants to do uh, that uh, you know how on how to make a difference so while we stick within those boxes on how we are told to act it's very difficult to be to be an entrepreneur or to or to to create something so you have to let those boundaries go and um, that is I think the number one thing. And uh, just be yourself and do what you believe in. Thank you so much. It was lovely talking to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So that's it from today's Heartbeat of Sri Lanka. What do we have to say to you? Well, believe in yourself and do not limit yourself to the boundaries created by society towards you. So that's it from today's Heartbeat of Sri Lanka. We'll see you in another two weeks.